All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television show in the history of the world. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I am going to be reviewing <clears throat> Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. This is book number one in the Dragon Riders of Pern trilogy. Well, if the whole series, really, I mean, I've got the original trilogy here, and then I've got four prequel books down here. Those are the only ones I own. Um, let's talk about the covers first. I mean, this book came out in 1968. This is old school science fiction, folks. 1968. That's like 50 some odd years ago. So these, this, these stories have been around a long time. Uh, they're classics in both the fantasy field and the science fiction field. In fact, Anne McCaffrey was the first female to win a Hugo Award for her science fiction slash fantasy writing. And um, I have the version with the Michael Whalen cover, which is my favorite versions. These are... And uh, so, um, you know, Michael Whale, we talk about covers. We always review the covers first because I love graphic design and cover illustration. And they, no, they none of them get better than when Michael Whalen does them. He just, this is just beautiful. It's an absolutely beautiful, stunning cover with the dragon and the dragon rider. And he did the uh, other covers of the book number two and book number three, The White Dragon. And he did the covers for these books down here, too. Screw it. I'll just show them to you. I wasn't going to, but, you know. These are the prequel books. Dragons, Dawn, The Renegades of Pern, All the Wares of Pern, and this one here. Um, so let's just talk about book number one. This is a book... This trilogy I read um, a long, long time ago when I was a kid. I don't remember jack squat about it. So rereading it was kind of interesting. Um, here's what I'm going to tell you right off the bat. Uh, the writing is exactly what I love in fantasy. And I think that this is kind of like the old school fantasy writers like Anne McCaffrey Fritz Lieber, Michael Moorcock, Catherine Kurtz, a lot of those that were writing fantasies in the 60s and early 70s, they kind of made the effort to really make their stories feel like they were set in a real ancient medieval type setting. I mean, just with the word choices that they used, the prose that they were using, and McCaffrey does that in spades here, you really feel like you're living on another planet that is set in a medieval age of its own, and it's just magnificent. So what's this book about? Okay, it starts out, we find out that this is sort of a fantasy slash science fiction book. It's more science fiction, even though it's about dragons and dragon riders, and it's and there's all these castles and keeps and swords and so, sort of sorcery and like, um, you know, tapestries hanging on the walls and, and, and all of this stuff going on. It's more of a science fiction story. What happens is, this is a, a planet that's colonized by Earthlings hundreds of thousands of years ago, or ago, or in the future, whatever, you know what I'm saying. It's a colonized planet. It's, a, it's, it's the third planet. It's, it's in the Sagittarian sector. It's, 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 a, it's a G6, a G star, G6 star, I don't know what you call those. Anyway, there's a five planets orbiting the star. The third planet is named Pern, which is, I think is a great name for a planet. Just P-E-R-N. It's just simple. It works. I believe it. I buy it. Anyway, they, they've colonized this planet and then um, so much time has gone by that they've really forgotten. The people that live on the planet at the time of this book are living in this sort of this medieval society with the castles and the dragons and stuff. Um, and they've really forgotten a lot of the technology and things like that. So all that's kind of in the history. It's been forgotten. There's just myth and legend of it. Well, there's another myth and legend of this silver thread that is that kind of get that kind of like rainstorm or hailstorm 
once in a while there's these storms that where silver thread sort of just you know I'll just imagine like uh party confetti just floating down over the planet just thousands and thousands but it's deadly it, this thread will um destroy organic life as soon as it hits it and so these these storms are very deadly and but they're legendary um they haven't seen them in a while uh but then suddenly they start happening again well what we get is that's where the dragons and the dragon riders come in We've got this uh, character named, um, no, just for the opening, just the opening scenes. And let's talk about the writing again a little bit more. The opening scenes are, full, are so chuck full of world building, myth, mystery, the lore of this planet and the people that inhabit it. It's just, and, it, and the writing isn't like real garrulous or verbose. It's just written so well and so concisely but it packs so much information right from the beginning i was just i was like literally like kind of in awe of what ann mccaffrey was doing just with the world building and laying out the story at the same time it just seemed so effortless and so easy and like i said the the word choices she was using i just felt like i was living right there in that environment with those characters very very vivid writing in some spots the one spot where the writing wasn't that vivid was in the description of the characters. I don't think she described one single physical attribute of any character at all, ever. Which I don't like particularly because I like when the authors at least give me something to go on. I, I want to know if the character's fat, good-looking, ugly, tall, dark, handsome, pretty. I like to know the details, and I just... I just had to picture in my head whatever I could for whatever person. I just, there was nothing to go off of. That's the only thing I didn't like about this book. The only thing I didn't like. Because everything else is described in lovingly loving detail. The world, the places, the dragons. Just not any character whatsoever. You just have to glean what they might look like based off of what they're doing. Like the main character, Lessa. She is the young daughter of sort of some nobility that have been assassinated, and she has gone into hiding as sort of a servant girl. And so I just had to picture her as a servant girl wearing servant girl clothes. Um, and then, uh, so that's her. Now we've got Falar, who is a dragon rider, one of the guys that rides dragons. And then we've got Fax, F-A-X, who's sort of the antagonist of the story. And um, all of these people come together, and then the... the, the the, the threat of the threads falling down, they just have to kind of come together. And I'll read the back of it just because it gives... I'm, I'm kind of stumbling through this. Here, here it is. Um, so after, you know, Lessa was ready to come out of hiding and reclaim her birthright. Remember, her parents were assassinated. And to oppress the young dragon queen and become a werewoman of Brendan. So Brendan is sort of some of the they're the ants they're the ancestors of the first colonists they were the last name of brendan so anyway suddenly the deadly silver threads once again threatened all of pern with destruction but the mighty telepathic dragons that for centuries had defended pern were now few in number not nearly enough to protect the planet in its hour of greatest peril then lessa hatched as a daring and dangerous scheme to rally support from people who had long ago ceased to exist. So yeah, the planet is being threatened again by these storms of silver thread. They don't have enough dragons to fight them. So what the, what the basically the dragons would fly through the air and burn the thread as it fell. Um, the thread can be the thread is dangerous to organic. It just melts it away. It just melts melts things into oblivion if it's organic. But things like steel and and uh, fire and stuff can destroy the thread. So the dragons fly through the air, and then with the dragon riders, and they burn the thread as it falls before it can come and rain down destruction upon the planet. That's the gist of the whole thing. In the midst of all that, we've got a lot of political intrigue, a lot of characters doing this, that, and the other, stabbing each other in the back, having affairs. It's just a really cool sort of drama set amidst this crazy planet and uh, with dragons, and it's just cool. And we get in the back, we get, we, I mean, we do have a map, 
as most fantasy books do, we do have a nice map. In the back, we get a good 20-page glossary of all the characters and all the different types of dragons there are and what the colors of the dragons mean and all the different myth and lore that follow this book. It's just great, great stuff. I was pleasantly surprised with my reread of this. I didn't. I went in with no expectations at all, and I was really delighted with it. It's just pretty cool, and then, you know, it's spurred me on to go ahead and reread re re these two books, which I've read again as a kid. And then go ahead and check out some of these uh, prequels. Dragon Riders, Dragon Flight. I am going to give it a solid 9 out of 10. It's one of the classic fantasy books that most fantasy fans should probably get their hands on and read if you haven't already. That's my review.